Good afternoon, my name is Mark, and today we'll be talking to you about augmented reality and how it can be implemented uh, on modern web browsers. So here's a brief overview of what I'll be covering in this talk. First, I'm gonna explain what constitutes augmented reality, so what it is and isn't, how to make it, the different forms it can take, and how you can interact with it. Next, I'm gonna go over how it can be implemented in the browser, um, and that's gonna kinda transition into a relatively simple demonstration of a browser-based AR app. So let's get started. Uh, AR is pretty self-descriptive. It is augmented reality. Uh, the basic principle behind any AR interface is to analyze your current environment in order to project images or objects onto it. Ideally, you can interact with these objects, but it's not really a requirement. Uh, the way I see it, AR is meant to enhance your real life experience um, while keep, by keeping you connected to uh, the virtual real world without really breaking um, from it, which is to say you don't have to pause from what you're doing uh, you know, by grabbing like a phone um, uh, in order to check your updates, emails, messages, or whatever. They just appear in your environment and are readily accessible. So now we're going to kind of the basic requirements for AR. There's four components that you'll need. Uh, the first and simplest is just a camera feed. Uh, you need this to capture your environment, uh, to identify markers. Um, should maybe be uh, identifiers. I'll get into why there's an asterisk around that later. Um, and you know, for here, you uh, can project information. The next step, um, the next requirement is definitely the most important, the most difficult, it's kind of the magic of AR happens here, uh, and it's through computer vision. Uh, this field deals with how computers can gain understanding uh, from images or videos uh, with the goal of essentially recreating uh, you know, the functionality of the human visual system. Uh, so as such, accurate recognition is kind of the fundamental problem uh, and an issue for computer vision algorithms uh, in current Day implementations, convolutional neural networks are the most effective systems for performing uh, object recognition. Diving into these is an entire presentation or course uh, in and of itself, uh, so I'm just going to try to give a uh, brief, somewhat superficial overview uh, of how that works. And so what they want to do is recreate the organizational structure of your visual cortex. Um, and so in visual cortex, you have these layers of neurons. And there's kind of two properties they have that we're interested in. Uh, one is the receptive field. Uh, and the other one is kind of the stimuli to which they can respond. So the receptive field for a uh, visual neuron just means the area in your uh, visual field that it responds to. So you'll have, you know, one simple cell neuron in uh, area V1 that could respond to, you know, this area in, you know, the top left quadrant of your visual field, um, you know, generally speaking. Um, and the stimuli is just what this neuron is tuned to respond to. Um, and when, you know, that particular stimuli exists in a neuron, in a simple cells um, or, you know, a visual cells, receptive field, it will fire an action potential, which is just uh, the word you use for talking about neurons uh, firing. So at the most basic level, um, you'll have these simple cells, and they primarily respond to orientation. Uh, and so they kind of feed their output uh, into these things called complex cells. Uh, they also respond to orientation and grading, but kind of uh, mostly not so much from, not as much directly from input, but from an aggregation of simple cells, and as such, they can kind of respond to light patterns um, and motion. And complex cells go on to interact with other cells, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and it's kind of through this layering um, process of kind of interpreting specialized feature detection that uh, uh, we are able to reconstruct and derive meaning from visual input uh, in real time, all the time. Uh, and the brain just does this uh, automatically, and you know CNNs are attempting to recreate this incredibly complex uh, but efficient um, solution. Um, and another alternative outside of CNNs uh, is this, at least the most famous one, uh, it's just regular like, object recognition software, so the Viola-Jones framework is something that exists in 
initially in OpenCV, which is a Java Python library for object detection. Uh, and it kind of has, it's applied to facial recognition. Uh, it has four steps. Uh, one is it identifies the HAR components. Uh, and HAR components are just common features to all human faces. So, you know, mouth, nose, eyes. Uh, and what it does is it kind of blocks them out as a rectangle uh, in, uh, in the program. And from those rectangles, it creates an integral image, uh, which in computer vision is a data structure and algorithm for kind of quickly and efficiently generating the sum of values in a rectangular image. So it kind of takes this input and converts it to meaningful data that your computer can then um, interpret. Uh, the next two steps in Viola Jones are kind of optimization steps. You have uh, at a boost, which is a machine learning algorithm, which can just kind of accept and recognize the best um, features and just use those when you train data with them. It can just makes it uh, faster. Uh, and then it has cascading classifiers, which is a method to identify positive facial features as well as kind of false negatives, things that aren't your face, so that the algorithm isn't spending time analyzing parts of a scene that are not a face. Um, and so this kind of allows it to skip over things and uh, be a lot more efficient. Um, and so I am going to be making a demo that kind of uses the Viola Jones a little bit. The third thing you need is an object generator. Uh, in the web, this is actually relatively straightforward. If you use something like WebGL or 3GS or any of those frameworks, uh, you can relatively easily create a 3D object um, and kind of display it onto your scene once the machine algorithm, or once the machine vision algorithm has kind of taken care of the, the heavy lifting. Uh, you could also just totally stay native, use the HTML5 Canvas app um, to draw some stuff, which we uh, will be doing later on. Lastly, uh, another simple component, the display. It's the scene on which your AR interface exists. For the most part, it's just the screen of, you know, tablet, phone, computer. Um, you can get creative with it. Uh, like in this example, but usually it's just your screen. Quick distinction, AR is not virtual reality. Um, there's just like a small difference that's worth mentioning, but VR completely removes a user from reality and puts you in this virtual space that is disconnected from everything. Um, AR does not do this, so it's just kind of worth mentioning. So now I'll go into the two different kinds of AR uh, that can exist, uh, marker-based and markerless. Um, marker-based AR is probably the most common, uh, and basically it identifies predetermined patterns that exist in the database of your structure. So uh, a QR code or an image like the one in there, there will be a reference to that construct in your database, and your machine vision algorithm just looks for the scene. As soon as it finds that, it displays something onto that property. So these are a lot simpler to implement. Um, they're a lot less intensive on the processor because your algorithm is not really trying to determine if something um, is or isn't the right input, but it's just waiting until it sees the right one and then uh, it displays. And although, although simple, they're still pretty hard. Um, so like the image shows, probably good to uh, pair program these kinds of things. Um, uh, secondly, we have markerless AR. Um, they do not reference predetermined patterns stored in your database. Instead, they kind of search the scene for certain identifiers, so faces, objects, colors, uh, et cetera, you know, depending on the functionality of your app. And oftentimes, they can rely on geolocation of a scene. So you, know, you show a certain image, and then from there, it can pull where you are, identify certain you know, landmarks, and you know, display information to you from that, you know, like when it was founded or whatever. Um, these are much more difficult. They're a lot less common because uh, they are very energy and uh, you know, power intensive uh, because the machine vision algorithm has to search the scene and not necessarily you know, looking, knowing kind of what prototypical images it's looking for determine uh, you know, in real time if what it's looking at is you know, accurate, like if this image is a dog or, or not. Um, and Personally, I think markerless is a bit of a misnomer because you're still looking for certain markers, um, you know, certain identifiers. It's, to me, a bit easier to think of the two paradigms as you know, predetermined AR and undetermined AR, um, if, if that helps. Uh, so now let's kind of get started on a demo of AR on the web. At first, uh, you know, the requirements 
for building AR in the Med. Uh, and AR in general is, you know, maybe daunting uh, at best. Uh, you have to handle machine vision. You have to handle 3D rendering. You have to handle everything in between. A lot of moving parts. Um, you know, you might find yourself starting to work up some anxiety about the whole situation. <laughs> um, but luckily, uh, as is the answer to many questions uh, and many concerns in the era of modern JavaScript development, there is a library for that. <laughs> um, there are, in fact, many libraries, um, a lot of them super powerful. I'm going to focus on one called tracking.js. It's an open source library for machine vision uh, algorithms, they kind of define it on their website as uh, the Tracking JS library brings different computer vision algorithms and techniques uh, into the browser environment. Um, and it's really powerful because it just abstracts away everything difficult about AR. The machine vision algorithms are just kind of happening uh, in, in the background. You can access them. I don't know how visible that is. Um, I guess it's a little blurry, but you know, you, th there's this tracking thing, and there's certain trackers they have. They have color trackers, they have face trackers. These are just methods that you can apply to tracking objects to determine, you know, in which way you want, you know, what you want the uh, algorithm to look for. So what I'm doing is I have, uh, I'm using a built-in example that they have, actually, for, um, to kind of track colors and do a little sketching app. Um, it comes preset with uh, magenta and cyan. The only bit of code that I wrote was kind of a new uh, color tracker for the color green, uh, just because my shirt throws it off a little bit sometimes when I was working with Cyan. And from Reacto, I just had a green marker uh, on hand. Um, and so now that it's determined, let's check out this simple uh, markerless drawing app. Okay, so we can see me. And um, so if you could have seen the code, you'd see that it is listening for a magenta object to draw and a green object to erase. So if we go here, um, we'll see that I can begin drawing a little bit. Um, this is some nonsense, not very good art, so let's go ahead and erase it. Uh, and there you have it, a uh, relatively simple uh, browser-based AR application using Tracking JS. Super easy to implement. Uh, I recommend downloading it. If you have any questions about it, uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, otherwise, thanks for listening.